and welcome to part four of learning. We're going to talk about a comparison between classical and operant conditioning in about 10 or so different ways that they compare so you can get a little bit of understanding and grasp of what these two things are. So the first is what's the basic idea? So the basic idea of classical conditioning is that organisms learn an association between events they don't control. So for instance, Pavlov gives his dogs food. When the dogs see the food, they begin to salivate. Pavlov then pairs that food with a bell. Ling, 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 shows the food, dogs salivate. In no time did the dog have any control over whether Pavlov rang the bell or whether the dog Pavlov took out food. So it's outside of his control or the organism's control. Operant conditioning, right? is organisms learn associations between their behavior and the resulting events. So for instance, the environment gives you some sort of stimulus, right? Um, you are either rewarded or punished for that. So you learn to associate that reward or punishment with the event. So you associate with, with the, the behavior with the event, okay? So you're doing something. This is this is the only actually do something. Um, classical conditioning, you don't actually do anything, you just learn, and so you learn uh, between events that you can't control. Alright, so response. Response of classical conditioning is involuntary. And as you might guess, voluntary for operant conditioning. Um, this one's automatic. Classical conditioning is automatic, right? You can't control when you salivate. That's automatic. Voluntary, you definitely can control whether or not you put the quarter in the machine to get the music to play. Right? If you put a quarter in, you're rewarded with music. That's a voluntary action. And so you're rewarded by that, so you continue to do that. Um, acquisition, acquisition. How do you get, how does it, you get this association between right between events that you can't control or the between uh, behaviors and the results. Um, so you associate events with uh, classical conditioning where the the um, controlled stimulus announces the uncontrolled stimulus. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, the conditioned stimulus. The conditioned stimulus announces the unconditioned stimulus. So the conditioned stimulus, the bell dun -dun -dun -dun, announces that there's going to be food afterwards. All right. Um, with operant conditioning, you learn to associate the responses with the consequences. Right. And consequences, remember, is not good or bad. It's just what happens afterwards. So the consequences are either right. They're either a reinforcer or a punishment. Right. So your response, how do you respond? Here's re with the rewarded or punished, you learn to associate that. All right, um, extinction. Um, this one, the controlled stimulus decreases when the controlled stimulus is repeatedly present without, um, when it's just presented by itself. So if I just, Remember the condition stimulus is the bell with Pavlov. So if I keep doing the bell ding, 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 and I don't have any food, it's going to go down, right? So you're going to go down. So this happens when the condition stimulus just is shown over and over again. This one, when the reinforcer stops or goes down, when the reinforcement goes down, the um, behavior goes down. So for instance, uh, the reinforcer could either be positive reinforcement, um, I give you money for cleaning the bathroom. If I clean the bathroom and you don't give me money, I clean the bathroom less. All right, that's operant conditioning. Behavior, reward, or punishment afterwards. Or I'm controlling this one. This one, bell, oh, there's no food afterwards, so you learn to stop salivating. Spontaneous recovery. So sometimes they come back. After it goes extinct, it might come back just spontaneously, right? Um, so spontaneous recovery with classical conditioning is when it just spontaneously reappears after this has been, uh, the condition's response has been extinguished, right? So you stop salivating, so this is extinguished, and then it just randomly 
reappears. Um, this one, same thing, your response. So you'll do it when a response is appears. So you're not, you don't clean the bathroom, but all of a sudden you feel the need or you want to go clean the bathroom, right? Um, generalization. So generalization on this one is the tendency to respond to similar, similar, similar stimulus. So for instance, if it's a bell, um, it's a ding -a -ling, -a ling a ling bell, or maybe you hear like a school bell or something, right? And you can't distinguish the difference between the two. So the school bell is not the same as the ding -a -ling, -a -ling, -a ling a ling bell, right? And so you uh, salivate when you hear the school bell, right? Silly example, but uh, you know that's what generalization is. Um, this is when the, the stimuli are also reinforced. So for instance, uh, maybe you don't clean the bathroom, but maybe you clean the living room and you get rewarded by getting paid for cleaning the living room. And so all of a sudden now, living room's a room, just like the bathroom was a room, you're rewarded for it. So you learn to generalize, hey, maybe if I clean other things, I'm gonna get rewarded for it too. So generalization in this one is where you're responding to the stimulus. And the generalization is this one is where you, your behavior, you generalize where you got that reward from or that punishment from to other areas, right? So if you get punished for um, running in the street in, Front of your yard right maybe you're going to take that and not run in front of the street at your friend's house all right a couple more or a few more let's use white this time all right so discrimination uh, is when you learn to distinguish between uh, distinguish between the conditioned stimulus and other stimulus that do not uh, signal the unconditioned stimulus remember unconditioned stimulus is food makes you salivate and discrimination means um, I know that the bell is, that the school bell is not the same as the bell that rings uh, when I go ding -a ling a ling a ling that bell, right? I'm just seeing how many times I can say ding -a ling a ling a ling on this video, so keep track, please. Um, and then for operant conditioning, um, organisms learn that certain responses, but not others, will be reinforced. So maybe you didn't get rewarded for cleaning the living room, so you realize, okay, well, I guess only things that have toilets in them, I'm going to get rewarded for cleaning, right? Because my... Uh, parents don't like to clean the toilet. So if I clean the toilet, I'm going to get paid for it. And so you only clean things and you discriminate between which rooms of the house you might get paid for for cleaning. Okay, so again, you're controlling this one. Um, what's going on in your head? Cognitive processes, right? Because we learned, right? Skinner would say, no, 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 no. There's no cognitive process going on. We don't care about this. But, you know, more uh, recent research uh, supports the cognitive processes. Um, and then in this one, um, expectations play a big role. So the expectations that the conditioned stimulus uh, signals the arrival of the unconditioned stimulus, right? So the bell signals that the food's coming, all right? And this one is the expectation, expectation, that the response will be reinforced, right? This is response. This one's reinforced. Um, and also, you can also have what's called latent learning, which we heard about before, right? Is where you 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 see this and you, you process this in your head, but you don't actually do it until you later need to do it, right? So latent learning means you don't actually exhibit the behavior until there's a need to exhibit the behavior. Um, so that's another, uh, another reason why we think that there's cognitive processes going along. And then finally, biological predispositions. Um, if you can naturally do it, uh, the response, then it's going to be easier to pair those things. So you naturally, dogs naturally salivate when they see food really easily, right? So I can pair something with that salivation really easily because dogs naturally salivate. I can't. If dogs don't naturally stand on their head, right? So I'm not going to be able to do classical conditionings for dogs to stand on their head because that's not a natural action. I can't associate those two things, but salivating I can. And with operant conditioning, um, same thing. Organisms learn best uh, behaviors similar to their own natural behaviors. Um, unnatural behaviors instinctively drift back. Remember, so we talked about instinctive drift. So we can teach Shamu to jump and do these fun things, but Shamu is eventually going to go back to being a killer whale um, if we don't continually reinforce her. So um, the things biological predisposition just means if it's natural behavior, you're more likely to see a pair. 
a pair there. All right, and that's all we've got now for classical and opera conditioning a comparison. Thank you very much.